head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Iberian Gage. Iberian Gage is a train game for three to five players where you're trying to have the most money at the end by investing and influencing different rail companies. And over the course of the game, you're trying to buy stocks in those and then raise their values by influencing them. But as players invest, they actually go into a treasury that this company will use in order to build throughout the game. But it's the players who determine what and where they build using the money of the company. Like working together to get to a big city, making your dividends go up, and the stock value. And dividends is cash now because you're going to be making dividends for each of the shares that you own. For example, the purple, pink, and green players are going to earn shares. Purple's actually going to get two of them for 14 bucks. But you have to be careful because if someone gets too powerful, the other share owners might just waste their money building into expensive spots to dwindle the funds. And with clever play, you can set yourself up to have other companies lease from you, giving you money when you need it the most. So in this case, yellow would pay right to the purple company, which is a great way to waste funds for the company because they'll run out eventually. And after a series of investing and building rounds, whoever has the most money with all their shares and money in hand is the winner. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. I've been engaged in simple rules, one page with tons of depth. The player interaction in this game is off the charts. You're constantly either working with other players or you're purposely not and draining their companies of all the money they have because they're too powerful in that company. Bro companies must get in position to lease from other companies if they don't have any money left. And sometimes one player owns in both and is trying to make that happen. And that's really an awesome thing in this game. And the game is amazing. It is so awesome. It is just like, ha, oh, it's a train game that I will probably love forever. On the downside of things, the money in for the treasuries in this game really should have been a track on a board because it's very fiddly and it really slows the game down, constantly making change and making little things here and there. And the board itself is quite bland and ugly. I wish they would have made it look more engaging and you know more modern but still yet functional. But this kind of saxophone serenade is a fantastic one, even better than Irish Gage, which I really liked a lot in this series. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're on the Iberian Peninsula and it's all about the railroads and companies and building tracks and leasing tracks and buying shares and making a whole lot of pounds and money that is. Today we're taking a look at Iberian Gage. This is brought to us by Capstone Games. It is for three to five players. It is a rail stock market game that has some interesting twists. Let me show you those. I'll see you on the other side. In Iberian Gage, you're trying to have the most money in the end, which essentially is pounds and is used by these different money cards. And you're going to be buying stock and influencing the different companies of the different railroads. Now, this is the map that you're dealing with. And at the beginning of the game, players are going to be investing in different companies, starting the railroads and starting in one of the major cities. And over the course of the game, these rail companies, their shares are each going to be worth a certain amount. And they're going to be going up and down depending on what happens throughout the game. And of course, you're trying to have shares in the companies that become more expensive as the game goes on as you make money. But you're also gonna need capital to be working throughout the game and so all the companies are gonna be paying different dividends throughout the game as well to give you some cash to work with. Now an interesting concept in the game is that you have your own money and there's a bank, but there's also treasuries. Each of the companies that you invest in, for example, this red one here, let's say it would look like it was 24 pounds that is the original investment there. So anybody that has a share here, and these are basically cubes of player colors. So the player that's playing green and the player that's playing purple each paid $24 and they paid it to the treasury of that red, uh, the, the red company, which means this red tr uh, train is gonna have this money to work with as capital to be able to move around the board and, and you know, build tracks and such. And so if anyone bought shares of this, again, it's 24, but it goes to that rails treasury, which that company is gonna be using to move around. Now the game is played over multiple rounds. There's two types of rounds. There's basically like a, a, a um, you know a stock round where you're going to be buying stock, and then there's a build round where, where people that have shares in different uh, railroads will be able to move them. And then you basically go you know stock build build stock build build stock build and the game's over. So there's just two different types of rounds in the game. The stock rounds are pretty straightforward. If you want to buy into a company, you simply spend the amount into that 
uh, railroad's treasury, as I mentioned earlier, depending on the amount of the current value. And when you do that, you get to put your cube in there to show that you own a share in that company. But when building, this is going to allow you to build one train per person that has a share in that company off somewhere where you already have something. So we started here, so we could build anywhere next to here right now. Now, there's a different amount of cost depending on where you're building. For example, these easy spots, it just it costs four. Into the difficult spots, it's eight. And to build into an urban area or a city, it's also just four. Now, the way the build phase works, actually, is you, you actually would start from the top here and work your way down. And actually, the green player would be able to possibly build if they wanted to for the red railroad using its money, the railroad's money. And then the purple player would also be able to do that. And then after both players have done that, uh, it's going to pay out dividends. And that's the red railroad. And you'll see right now where it is on the dividend track, each red share owner is going to get two. And notice they're not equal, and this is interesting too, because now this one actually has, the red one has six possible shares that can be bought in it. The purple one is, and the yellows, those are the most, you know, they're, they're actually worth, they, they pay out more than the other ones, but there's only four spots to buy shares in the purple and the yellow. So it sort of scales with the amount of dividends that's there. But right now, I'm just showing you the as if it was the purple is turn. Let's just say we're down here in this turn order of the building. And right now, only one player owns this. It happens to be the purple player. Uh, and they're going to, or the maroon, whatever you want to call it, will take this. And let's say they want to build into here. Remember, we said it was four. Now, building into a, a, a city or an urban area, this is an urban area, is very important in the game. Because when you do so, you'll notice that you can move your dividend up by one. Now it's going to cost, it's going to cost four. So the per, whatever player is doing this, in this case, this player, they would take that $4 and they would spend it from the company's money. So they'd spend the five and they'd get one back in change. And again, because they got here, this tells them they can go up one on the dividend track. So the purple's like this. So now when this pays out, it's going to pay four instead of three, and it's going to pay it to each of the shares. Now, this is another interesting concept. It's going to go to every player, but there's only one player that owns it. So this player is going to get four from the bank, but also there's three shares that aren't owned by players. So the actual treasury will get three shares of four. So this is actually going to get $12 or 12 pounds, I guess I should say. So it's interesting that as the game goes on, each time there's a build phase, the railroad is gonna be making more and more money, the less and less people that are invested into it. And when people do invest into it, it's gonna fill up as well because they're spending money from their own money to put it into here to buy shares. So at the beginning of the game, these are gonna get sort of filled up and it's gonna have a lot of working capital to kind of move around and do things. But as the game goes on and other players start buying into there, once it's completely full, when this thing pays out dividends, the players are going to be making shares, but the railroad itself doesn't. So it will start to dwindle and it will end up usually running out of funds at some point. And we'll talk about how to alleviate in a moment, but if on your turn, now you're only building, each player can only build one spot. Let's say we get here and not only are you going to go up two in the dividends, but you're also going to get the stock to go up once. So by getting that, you're going to go up two, and by any time you cross this line, you'll also move to the right. So it's actually going to move twice, once for getting to that uh, city uh, and once for this. So it's going to actually go up twice, and it's just gone from a 16 to a 24 valuation for each share. Now, we talked about running out of money, and if you do run out of money, there's only one way to get it from, from the, you know, the railroad's money, and that's by getting leased, because since you're only going one spot, this is very important, because if you don't get to either an urban area or a city area on your in a specific round, there's a penalty. And you'll actually go down in price for every player that owns a share or every you know share that's owned by a person. So if you own, if all purple was filled up like that with four uh, players, uh, four shares, and you didn't get somewhere on a turn, it's gonna go down like a rock. And this is important because this really is a lot of interaction in the game is tanking certain companies for your benefit. For example, let's say this yellow company, the blue player has three of the four shares there. Well, what can happen is the white player can really start to try to dwindle the money in there because they know that sure, they're gonna benefit, but the blue player's gonna be benefiting a lot more. So if it was the yellow's train's turn to sort of build that company, well, and it was the white player, uh, player's turn, they could just, hey, you know what? I'm gonna waste $8 and of, the, of the money and put it in the middle of nowhere because it's doing me no good because I really don't wanna help this company. I could try to take it. 
And if it was two to two, meaning blue owned two and the white player owned one and maybe the green player owned one, the green and the white player would be working together being like, hey, let's screw this up and just try to drain all the funds because blue's just killing it on here. So there's a lot of interaction like that. Now back to running out of money. Again, one of the ways to get money after you get out, you run out with the railroad is to get leased. And leasing is pretty cool because you can normally only move one spot you know, from anywhere that you already have one. But let's say yellow wanted to move and they wanted to get all the way to here. Well, there's one, two, three, four, five spots that purple has. And we look here, normally that would have cost them 20 pounds, five times four, but they can lease it. They're gonna lease it from that other railroad, it's only gonna cost them 10, five of those spots times two pounds. But guess what? It's coming from the, the, the treasury of the yellow railroad, and it will actually go right into the purple's railroad. So if they were ever broken, this is a way that other railroads can make money is by leasing things, but it works out for both of them. And then yellow would actually build here for the $4 and they'd get to go up on the track of the dividends. But that's a way to make money is intentionally getting in other players' ways so that they want to lease from you and, and give, it, give it money. This is also a decent strategy that sometimes players will buy into companies that are close to each other and they'll like feed money from one into the other because they know it's going to benefit them in both ways and it's a really interesting part of the strategy of the game. Another thing you're trying to do long-term strategy-wise, if you can get one of the companies to basically get to five of these major cities, it'll pay out a one-time huge bonus. It's really hard to get to happen, but you might be able to get that to happen for a sort of a longer-term strategy. We talked about the sort of the buying shares, people go in clockwise order, possibly buying shares and, and you know getting uh, putting the money into the, the, the locomotive company's uh, treasury and getting shares in there, and those get paid off with dividends as I showed you earlier. Uh, but then we talked about building and each, you know, going top to bottom, you're gonna build, and that's pretty much all you do. Shares, build, build, shares, build, build, shares, and then build, and at the end of the game, it might look something like this, and then every player that owns a share, each of those shares is gonna be worth maybe 44 or 32, or maybe towards the end, a company ran out of money, and remember, if you can't get to a city or an urban area, it's gonna drop like a rock towards the end. And some of them end up being, being pegged and basically making very little money. Most of those people probably lost money. But essentially you have all the money in your hand at the end of the game, plus what all your shares are worth depending on you know the, uh, those, those specific railroads and whoever has the most money at the end is the winner. All right, well, there is Iberian Gauge. Now this game has simple rules, but tons of depth. I mean, literally it is a one page pamphlet that you have on both sides with some small print, so there's a decent amount they were able to fit on there. Uh, but still, for a game that's like sort of a big train game, uh, or feels like a big train game, it's not like an 18xx game, but it has some simple rules, uh, but it's got quite, quite a bit of depth. And those are the types of games I like the best. I call it my depth to complexity ratio. Games that are very deep, but without a whole lot of complexity, because the, 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 the enjoyment of the game is to try to figure out the best ways and to strategize and not necessarily with mechanisms just getting in the way just because of the fact that we wanted to throw in a bunch of mechanisms to fix design problems. So I love it. This is very clean design, but man, does it have great depth. The player interaction in this game is off the charts. This is not a solo type of game. This is a game where every decision that you make and every decision every other ma player makes affects everybody in the game. So you're constantly engaged, even when it's not your exact turn to do things, you're always trying to figure out what's going on. You're always, well, you're working together or you're not. And as I showed in the overview, like sometimes you're working together, you're talking through things in the table. Hey, what are we gonna do here? Well, let's build it down there. And then we could go here this round because the next round we can go here and here because there's just two of us and we'll be able to easily make it to a city or a, you know, an urban area so we won't get the penalty. That's the big thing is that looming penalty over you that will crush you if you don't get to a new spot each time you build uh, or each at the end of each build round. And you know, you're trying to get that done. So you're working with other players. But as I showed you there, sometimes you're not. Sometimes some player has like the majority of the shares and a couple other players have one share each. And you're like, well, we're going to make money anyways. This player is very motivated to do so. So why are we wasting it? Why, we're just making him double as rich as we are. So because usually that player got in early as well. It's not like they slid in late and took the last two spots because then it's like, well, they bought high anyway, right? And it's no big deal. We've made enough money off this. But anyway, so sometimes you're working with players, but other times you're not. And I think that's just the beauty of the game. Uh, and because of that, purposefully draining a company's treasury if someone has bought too much is one of the most fun things to do in this game for sure, where it's like, this player's got two or three shares. I'm just going to tank it. Let's just make it go here. Let's make it go into those mountains. That's very expensive. Let's drain the funds as much as we can and try not to put any other other trains near it that it will be able to, you know, get least money from. 
and you're like literally trying to just zap the whole train out there. And it's just really fun because definitely if you get rid of all the money from that train, uh, that company, and there's nowhere that they can get leased from someone else, because a lot of times they'll, they, you know, you can run out of money and that player might be like, well, good thing I own this other company. I'm going to purposely build it over here so that now this other company that's broke can lease, can get, can get leased. And I'm going to force that to happen. So it's really interesting how you own multiple companies, shares of multiple companies, and you can kind of like have one company help your other company that's in trouble. And it's just such, the nuances of this game are awesome. And so, and, and, and towards the end of the game, if your company doesn't have any money, if the railroad that you, that you're in, Man, those things drop like flies. How fast you can drop down if mo if you have four players that own shares and it didn't get to it and you get a penalty, that thing is dropping like flies. It can really change the game at the end. Uh, so the interaction not only between you and the players and each other, but also building trains from one company to another one you own is just, it's just a brilliant design choice. And, and mechanically, it's very simple, but from a design space and a decision space, it's so rewarding to see how this all plays out. Uh, so overall, this game is fantastic. I think it's, uh, I'm not, I'm not like a big, huge train game player now, but you know, it's, this is one. Now the box is 60 minutes. This game is not 60 minutes long. You're at least in this for 90 minutes, uh, especially because of the table talk and working with each other. And, and as the game goes on, it might feel quick at the beginning first few rounds, but then by the time the end of the game happens and every share is owned by every railroad, the last couple build rounds really take a while because you're building through all of them, all those things. Although sometimes you get to a, a railroad company and it's like, well, they're out of money and they can't just move anything or they're out of trains or whatever, and you can skip over them. But the game's definitely more like 90 minutes or maybe even longer if you're playing with a higher, you know, with, with a group that's that's slower and talks a little bit more. Uh, but for this, I love the game. A couple of uh, problems here. The biggest problem of this game that almost killed it, as good as the game is, is the money. And I love the idea of the treasuries uh, for the companies. That's just fantastic. But using the actual currency in the game for that is so fiddly you're constantly going oh i gotta play from here to here okay from this railroad to this railroad. oh i gotta make change let me make change over here and i go here okay red plays blue pays this to red and then blue pays this to the bank and they're leasing here then they're building here and like all this stuff's going and it's so fiddly and it just slows the game down and it's just you're constantly making change which is annoying and take keep a track of it there should have just been like a track or a separate board or a board on the track for each of the companies and you just have two cubes one for so the tens and one for the one you know what they have a one here and a five here they've got 15 pounds and you could just slide these things really quickly it would have made the game so much more enjoyable that like i'm gonna if there's not one on board game geek now i'm gonna go make one because everybody had a problem with this at the table and everyone was like this game's amazing but that really hurt it so I'm just gonna try to figure out a way to make a track to make that go a lot more smoothly. Uh, and then the other thing is, you know what? I love the cover of this, Ian O'Toole did the art. The board itself, you, you just walk by this game and it has zero table presence. It's ugly. Uh, it just looks very bland. It's functional and it works, but I think you could have made this functional and beautiful. You could have had the cities actually look like cities. You could have had the urban areas look like an urban area. The mountain area could have looked like a mountain and the, the regular areas could have looked like prairies or whatever. And you could have made them look very distinct but actually beautiful as opposed to just a palette of like, this looks like a boring game. Like if I walked by this game, if people were playing it, I would just keep walking. That's how boring the board looks. I wish they would have like made it look exciting and look modern and, and you know, things like that. But with all that being said, the game's so darn good, I'm going to keep playing it. So because of that, it's getting a saxophone serenade, which means I'm inducting into my game library, which doesn't happen often these days, because that means I got to boot one out. Got to figure out which one that is. So let's give this thing its rightful uh, due with a saxophone serenade. This has been a Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games, and helping you find the next one you'll love. Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table to a high quality gaming solution, they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with their amazing thematic premium stitch edge mats from noted board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and really cool accessories, 
It's a complete system that upgrades every game you play. Go to GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below. <laughs> oh my gosh, <coughs> right off the bat. All right, well, there's Iberian Rails. And those companies are gonna be worth a certain amount, and depending on what happens in the game, they'll be coming up a little bit.